Hey guys and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this video I'll show you guys how I solved the Fibonacci problem and I've done a simple Unity application where I prompt the user to enter a number and I I'll got the series down here. So let me show you how it works. I'll enter a number between 1 and 20 and that's the number of terms that I want to generate. So I'll generate 10 terms and I just click generate series and there you see on the bottom that's my Fibonacci series of numbers. So what is Fibonacci? Basically, it means that if we're looking for the end term, it's equal to the previous two terms added up. So if I'm looking for this term here, which is term 1, 2, 3, 4, term 4, term 4 will be equal to term 2 plus term 3, which is equal to term 4. That's 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. Then if I'm looking for term 5, basically what it's going to be is term 3, which is 1, and term 4, which is 2. I'm going to add that up, which gives me 3. And it goes on and on and on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications. With that being said, let's get started. So we're going to start by right clicking and creating a background. We're going to go down to UI and select an image. Then we're going to go into its inspector and select the, we're going to hold down shift and alt and we're going to stretch that out to fill the screen. Next, we're going to change the color of the image. So I'm going to fill in my color, but you can choose whatever you want. Then we're going to rename the image to background. Next thing we're going to do is go down to UI and select text mesh pro. We're going to import some essentials and we're going to close that off. We're going to rename this to Fibonacci and we're going to increase the font size. We're going to just stretch that out, we'll make it bold and we'll give it an underline. Then we're going to go into its erect transform and we're going to hold down shift and alt and we're just going to anchor it to the top center. Then we're going to go to our multi tool and we're just going to drop it down a bit. That looks fine. Next thing we're going to do is rename this to heading text and we're going to go to canvas and we're going to go down to UI and we're going to select text mesh pro. We're going to type in enter a number from 1 to 20 because just for this tutorial purposes we're just going to deal with numbers from 1 to 20 for Fibonacci series but you can obviously uh, take it up a notch and you can do it for however many numbers you want to so we'll rename this to user prompt text and we're going to select our rec tool and stretch that out a bit we'll select our multi tool and just move this up next thing I want to do is add in a text mesh pro input field I'll just stretch that out to make it bigger and I'll just move it to be in line with my text. So that looks good there. Next next thing I need is a button to do all of our functionality for us. So I'll go down to UI and select button text mesh pro. I'll just enlarge in that button a bit, move it to the right and I'll place it next to the Fibonacci heading. Then I'm going to rename this button as generate button. Next thing I'm going to do is rename the text on the button to say generate series. I'm going to bring down the font size a bit so that it fits nicely. Lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a text mesh pro and I'll just line it up there. I'll grab my rec tool and I'll just stretch this out. Then I'm going to change the vertex color to yellow and I'm just going to put in some dummy text here. So I'm going to put in 0, 1, 1. Because I know the first couple numbers of the Fibonacci series, I'll just add some dummy text and I'll leave it like that. Then I'll rename this to display values and all of our UI is taken care of. I'll save my work, I'll go down to my assets, I'll right click and create a new C -sharp script and I'll call this script Fibonacci. I'm going to double click to open it up in Visual Studio and I'm going to remove the start and update method for now. I'm going to import two libraries that I know I'm going to be using. It's a using unity engine.ui then I'll be using unity's uh, TM Pro which is a text mesh pro. Lastly, I'm going to be using a Unity system and now I can start with my code. The first thing I want to do is I want to get that value that the user enters and I want to store it in a variable. So I can do that. I can create my public TM Pro input field and I'll call it user input. The next thing I'm going to need is a variable to store this number in. So I'm going to use a long as a data type because the values of this numbers are going to be large and the int might not be able to contain it. So I'll call this max number and I'll equal that to zero. 
Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a public function so that I can add this onto my button so that it can do some work for us. I'll call this button generate Fibonacci. Then what I want to do is when I click this button, I want my user input to equal my max number. So I'll say max number is equal to my user input dot txt. But because this is a uh, string, I need to convert this to an int. I'm not going to convert it to an int this time. I'm converting it to a long. So I'll say long dot pass and I'll open my bracket there and I'll close it off there. So this converts it to a, to a long number. Then what I want to do is I want to create a function to do all of this work for me. So I'll call this function. I'll call it get Fibonacci and it's going to take in a couple values. The first value it's going to take in is the maximum number and the second value it takes in is going to be the output which is the display value text holder okay so what we need now we need to create this text holder so we'll say text mesh pro public text mesh pro and we'll call this display value text holder then we still need to create this function so let's do that down here we can make this a private function and we'll just say void get fibonacci and it's going to take in some variables as well it's going to take in a long number and it's going to take in a text mesh pro I'll just call this display value. I'll open my function up and now I can get started. So in my function, the first, I'm going to need a couple things. I'm going to need a value for my first term. I'm going to need a value for my second term and I'm going to need a variable for my next term. So we can do that. We can say term one is equal to zero. I know that it's going to be equal to zero because I know the first term of the series. Then I can say term two is equal to one because I know the second term of this series. Lastly, I'm just going to create a variable for my next term and I'm just going to initialize this to zero. So now I can start doing my checks. So I know that I'm going to be only displaying the amount of numbers the user enter. So I can do a quick for loop and I'll start this for loop at one because I know the first term and I'm going to say i is less than or equal to my number, which is my maximum num. Then what I can do now is I can start doing my checks. I can say if i is equal to 1 which is the first term i just want to display term 1 and i'll just leave a comma and a space and i'll close that off then i can do another check and i'll say if i is equal to 2 that means the second term i want to display the second term because i know the second term as well then what i want to do now i want to say else for every other case beside these two cases what i want to do i want to say the next term is equal to term 1 which i know plus term 2. Now in order to iterate or move through the series um, we need to start moving through the terms and the way that we're going to do this is so I'll just try to explain it to you quickly. So we know that the first term is 0, the second term is 1, the third term is 1, the fourth term is 2 and the fourth term is 3. So that's t1, that's t2, that's what we know, and this is the next term. So if you want to calculate the next term, we just got to say term 1, which is 0, plus term 2, which is 1, that equals to 1. Now this becomes the next term that we're looking for. So what we're going to say is term 1 is now equal to term 2, so that becomes term 1, and term 2 is now equal to the next term, so that becomes term 2. So now when we're looking for this, all we're going to say is term 1 plus term 2, which is 1 plus 1, is now equal to 2. And it moves on and on like that. So I hope you guys understand that. Now we can just do it in the code. So guys, I've already recorded this, but for some reason my mic was turned off. So I'm just going to walk you through what I've typed out. So all I said was term 1 is now equal to term 2, and term 2 is now equal to the next term. Then all I did was I displayed the next term. Then I said that before we display anything, I just want to make sure that the display value text holder has no uh, text in it. So I said display value text holder dot text is equal to now. I save my work and I head it over back to Unity. Then I created a empty game object and I called it Fibonacci Manager. Dragged my Fibonacci script onto that. Then I populated my fields here. I populated my input field. I just dragged this in and I dragged my display value text holder in there. Then I went to my generate series button. I went all the way down to my on click event. I added an on click event. I dragged my Fibonacci manager in there and I selected my Fibonacci script and I selected my generate Fibonacci function. And I click play just to check if everything works fine. So I'm going to test this out with 10 numbers or 10 terms 
and I press generate and there you see it adds nicely there. So I know that first term is 0, second term is 1, third term is 0 plus 1, fourth term is 1 plus 1, fifth term is 1 plus 2 and it goes on and on like that. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.